everyone, and welcome to Sex with Paula. I'm Nurse Paula, a sexual health nurse and educator. Today I'm going to talk about sexual education and why it's important. But before I do, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on my medically accurate sex ed videos. In the summer of 2018, in Canada, the province of Ontario chose to shelve its LGBTQ inclusive sex ed curriculum and reinstate the previous version from 1998. Huh? Not only does the 1998 version exclude topics like consent and gender identity, it also predates the recognition of same-sex marriage in Canada by seven years. That's right, Canada got marriage equality after Shrek 2, which means the Ontario government would rather teach a curriculum that does not include sex education for or about same-sex or gender non-binary folks. After severe pushback from parents, teachers, students, advocacy groups, the government announced that it will introduce a new inclusive curriculum for the 2019-2020 school year. Some of you may be asking, why? Why was this such a big deal to so many people? Okay, yes, the 1998 curriculum failed to mention genitalia at all. Maybe Ontario just needed a way to get 14 year olds to stop saying penis for hours on end. Penis, penis, penis. But one fact remains, improper sex education poses dangerous consequences for kids who may grow up without ever learning how their bodies work. Let's break it down. Each Canadian province regulates its own public school system, so there's no national standard for sex education, and you can see the difference across the board. In Quebec, the curriculum goes beyond the basics of anatomy and covers things like body image and gender stereotypes and consent and romantic feelings. Fun fact, Quebec also has the lowest teen birth rate in Canada. 12 gold condoms for you, Quebec. Meanwhile, in Saskatchewan, the province with the highest teen birth rate, students learn the words penis and vagina and about parenting and childbirth, but not about family planning or abortion. What's the opposite of a gold condom? Huh? But it's not just Canadians making questionable sex education policies. As of July 2019, only 13 US states require sexual education to be medically accurate. Let me say that one more time. In the United States of America, only 13 states require sex education to be medically accurate. That's like putting together IKEA furniture without a manual. Mm -hmm or trying to do a puzzle with only half the pieces, or if a hotel required that only some of its rooms not be on fire. Of the 13 US states that include sexual orientation in their curriculum, seven require homosexuality to be discussed in a negative light. Seriously, who wrote these laws? Mostly people without uteruses. So why does this matter? Well, a study done at the University of Columbia found that LGBTQ teens are 20% more likely to attempt suicide in conservative US counties than in liberal ones. And of that group, 25% have already attempted suicide at least once. If you're considering suicide, please reach out to someone. There are links below this video and on screen for places you can call for help. So did any of this convince you or concern you? Good, start signing petitions, contact your official representatives, donate to sexual health organizations. I've listed a number of them below and vote because it's great to discuss American politics as long as we don't forget that we have similar issues happening here in Canada. Also, now that Ontario's sex education curriculum is taking a step in the right direction, kids will once again get to say penis a bunch. And it'll count as schoolwork. Penis, 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 ding. Hey everyone, I'm Paula Burrows and I play Nurse Paula in Sex with Paula and the Dangers of Online Dating. Please subscribe to this channel, take a look and watch both seasons, like all the videos, and follow D-O-O-D the series on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks for watching. Penis, penis, penis. <laughs>